Reese gets sentry as bad weather finishes day early in Derbyshire. Derbyshire hosted Glamorgan for their third match of the campaign. After two good performances, they'll be looking for a second win against the Welsh side. Glamorgan managed to survive a follow-on last week against Gloucestershire and look to bring their second innings performance into this match. Derbyshire started the morning batting with Godleman and Rees pacing themselves well, picking up boundaries along the way. The first ball of the ninth over would see the first wicket, however, with Hogan trapping Godleman LBW, leaving Derbyshire 19 for 1. Madsen joined Rees at the crease and the score started to build nicely. After 40 minutes, the partnership reached 50 off 58 balls. But as lunch approached, Glamorgan managed to take some momentum into the break, Hogan taking another wicket as Madsen edged behind for Cullen to take the catch. That cued the teams to go for lunch, a strong start for Derbyshire with 107 for two. Reese on 44 and on track for a half century. Reese came out with lace after the break and picked up his 50 after two overs, a single off carry. The late wicket not affecting the batsmen as they continued to add to the score, Reese being the more effective of the batsmen. Lace only managing to survive nine overs as he hit one to Hempfrey off Carey's ball, being sent back to the pavilion after just scoring six runs. With wickets falling around him, Reese continued to score and find the rope, with Hughes in a supporting role. Lloyd bowled an expensive over with Reese hitting him to the boundary twice, then Hughes getting another four. As Derbyshire kept the score ticking along, Reese edged closer to his century. Then, off a single from Salter, Reese got his fifth first class 100. Derbyshire then got to 200 after two boundaries from Hughes as he began to settle into the game. Soon after Reese and Hughes got a 100 partnership, Reese was caught by Lawler to send him packing with 111, Douthwaite with the delivery. Hughes was joined by Hossein as he managed to pick up his half century. But they only managed 13 balls together before Hossein was bowled by Labu Shane, leaving Derbyshire with five wickets left. Critchley was next into bat, but didn't face a ball before the tea break. Derbyshire 238 for five. Glamorgan went into the break with their tails up after slowing down the attack hoping to continue their momentum in the evening session. After the break, both Critchley and Hughes hit a four each before bad light caused them to come back off the pitch. That bad light became rain and the players didn't come back out. A good start for Derbyshire, Reese picking up a century and Hughes on 63 not out. Glamorgan will look to finish what they started before tea so they can get into bat as soon as possible. Evenly poised at halfway stage in Derby. Lewis Rees impressed with a century on day one for Derbyshire before a combination of bad light and rain ended the day's play soon after tea against Glamorgan. The hosts would be looking to push on and try to post an imposing total on day two. Derbyshire resumed on 253 for five with Alex Hughes hoping he'd be able to press on and bring up a century on day two. He began in partnership with Matt Critchley as both batsmen picked up early boundaries off Labouchet. But Critchley was soon gone, as Dan Duthwaite removed him for 15, with Selman taking the catch. And Hughes was not to reach his 100, as he was bowled by Lucas Carey for 82. Who also soon claimed the scalp of Van Beek in similar fashion. Derbyshire were however able to claim a third batting point as they passed 300, as Dahl settled in by finding the rope several times. But Carey struck again to remove Palladino and leave Derbyshire 9 down. Dahl fought back, finding the rope twice from a Duthwaite over to reach 350 and register a fourth batting point. Dahl looked to cut loose after reaching his 50 and eventually fell for 64 to bring the innings to an end when he was bowled by Hogan to leave the hosts all out for 378. Glamorgan made a solid start to their reply as Selman picked up a couple of early boundaries off Rampall. 
but the run rate slowed to two and over as Derbyshire bowled with great discipline. And Palladino claimed the scalp of Selman as he edged to Critchley at slip. Hemphrey and Labuschagne ground their way to the interval as the visitors scored only 60 runs in the session. Labuschagne tried to get things moving after the interval with a maximum off Ram Paul, but the bowler had his revenge in his next over when he pinned him LBW for 14. Lloyd and Hemphrey counter-attacked with a series of punishing boundaries. Before Reese had Lloyd caught by Dahl. Hemphrey remained to bring up his third successive 50 with a leg side four off Reese and Billy Root joined him by picking up a couple of boundaries of his own. Root became more assertive as the end of the day approached, with Hughes coming in for some stick and conceding three boundaries from an over. But Hemphrey fell LBW to Van Beek for 75. But Root remained to bring up his 50 before the close and leave the contest evenly poised at the end of day two, with the visitors 214 for four and 164 behind. Glamorgan strike to set up tense finish on final day at Derby. Honours were largely even at the halfway stage of the game in Derby after Glamorgan closed on 214 for four in response to Derbyshire's 378, with Billy Root well placed unbeaten on 53 as day three began. It was Lawler who fell first on day three, however. The ball after scoring the first boundary of the day, he was trapped LBW by Ram Paul for 10. And Root fell soon after as he too was pinned LBW, this time by Lewis Rees. It was left to Doothwaite and Cullen to lead the recovery for Glamorgan and they duly dug in for most of the session. But they gradually began to threaten the boundary more as the morning wore on, with Doothwaite picking up two fours from a Hughes over not long before the interval. And the Welsh County reached the lunch break on 299 for six, still 79 behind the host's first inning score as the contest remained dead even in Derby. Doothwaite and Cullen had moved their partnership beyond 70 before Doothwaite edged Ram Paul behind to Hussein. And Ram Paul struck again in his next over to bowl Cullen. Glamorgan were in danger of a first innings deficit when Reese removed Salter for a 10 ball duck. Lucas Carey decided the best way to get his team to Derbyshire's score was to throw the bat at everything, and he moved to 24 from just 12 balls thanks to a maximum off Reese and three fours. Before Ram Paul had him caught by Lace to complete a five wicket haul and earn his side a first innings lead of 32. With less than a day and a half of the match remaining, Derbyshire would need to move the score on quickly in order to force a result but they lost Godelman early as Hogan had him caught behind by Cullen. Lewis Rees dug in in response, but Madsen found the boundary rope twice from a carry over, before picking up two more fours from consecutive balls off Doothwaite. Madsen was scoring at better than a run a ball as the tea break arrived, with Derbyshire holding the advantage with a lead of 96 and only one wicket down. Madsen came out with the same intent after tea, and Reese also began picking up a few boundaries of his own as they advanced the score to 96 for two before Lloyd had Madsen caught by Selman for an enterprising 47 from 55 balls. And after a couple of falls from Lace, Lloyd also removed Reese, with Selman again claiming the catch. Carey removed Hughes for just six soon after as the game suddenly began to move at pace in the evening session. And soon after, Hussein was also gone as he edged Doothwaite behind to Cullen. Doothwaite struck twice more soon after when he bowled Lace and then removed Critchley three balls later LBW. Van Beek also fell to Doothwaite before the close as he too was caught behind by Cullen. Palladino and Dahl dug in to see their team to the close but it wasn't to be as Palladino was bowled by Hogan in the penultimate over. 
that left Derbyshire nine down with a lead of 203 going into the final day's play. Glamorgan come from behind to win Thriller in Derby by two wickets. Derbyshire had one wicket remaining to extend their lead of 203 as much as possible and set Glamorgan a difficult final day chase at Derby. Rampal came out intent on playing his shots as he scored a four and a maximum off consecutive balls from Hogan before adding another boundary off Duthwaite. But the fun wasn't to last as Labu Shane came on and bowled him for 30 to bring the innings to a close. Excellent work from the last pair that left Glamorgan a final day chase of 246 to win. And the Glamorgan innings was just three balls old when Derbyshire made the breakthrough, Selman edging behind off Palladino. Soon after, Hemphrey was also on his way, plum LBW to Ram Paul. Labashain counter-attacked with back-to-back -back boundaries off Palladino. And a four and a six from Ram Paul in the next over as the Australian scored a better than a runner ball. Another four came up in Ram Paul's next over, but the West Indian hit back as Labashain got a leading edge to mid-wicket to fall for an enterprising but frustrating 32 from 28 balls. Root settled quickly though, striking back-to-back -back fours off Tony Palladino, an off-drive and a square cut as he moved to 19 not out at the lunch break. That meant Glamorgan needed a further 171 with seven wickets in hand to win the game. The Welsh County suffered a blow to their chances however when Root fell early in the afternoon session, LBW to one that might have kept a little low to give Ram Paul his eighth wicket of the match. Lloyd took over and smacked Van Beek square for four to move to 35. But Palladino accounted for him, LBW, when he was a little late on his defensive shot. That brought Duthwaite to the crease on debut, and he announced himself by driving Van Beek for four, and then flicking him through mid-wicket from the next ball. But Lawler gave it away somewhat in Critchley's next over, when he tried to put away a short ball, but could only pick out Lewis Reese at deep backward square. Duthwaite responded with three fours in quick succession off Van Beek, before he too fell in frustrating fashion when he got in all kinds of bother and presented Madsen with a simple court and bold to leave the host needing three further wickets in the final session. Glamorgan hadn't given up hope of reaching their target though as Cullen picked up three early boundaries to take the target below 60 and Glamorgan gradually became favourites as Cullen and Slater slowly ticked the runs off the target. Their 50 partnership came up after 23 overs together but there was to be a twist in the tail as Slater fell for 26 to Lewis Rees, with Madsen taking a sharp chance at slip. Before with just 17 needed, Cullen decided to release the shackles, pulling a short ball from Van Beek for four, and following it up with an edge through an absent slip cordon for four more. And after nearly a session of enormous tension, the end came quickly, as two more boundaries in the following over from Critchley took Glamorgan to a thrilling win by just two wickets. It was a fitting end to a fantastic contest that swung back and forth over the course of the four days. Glamorgan pick up a welcome 22 points, and Derbyshire have to lick their wounds and make do with seven. <laughs>